Hello once again everyone, Original Blood Ace here, and we have more stories to talk about. Five stories to be precise, so let's get right into it. First of all, Nintendo's copyright complaint against full screen Mario succeeds results in the game's closure. Now if you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, it was this website, an HTML5 website this guy made uh, a long time ago where you could play the old school Mario game basically on PC. You can even do uh, your own editing of your own levels and stuff. Uh, and it had some new levels it built into it, so whatever. It's been going around for quite a long time now. Nintendo finally got around to closing it. Uh, and you can read the story if you want on my Nintendo News. Just search for it or just scroll down, you'll find it. I uh, don't really need to say too much. It's just kind of like... It's been around for a while. I don't really think... I can see both sides to this story. Nintendo, I mean, they own the Mario IP, obviously, so they're protecting their own franchise. But at the same time... I really don't see Nintendo uh, having too big of an issue with this. I mean, it's not an official Mario game. It's not uh, made by them. It's basically a spin-off type thing. I think N Nintendo should have just made it so, you know, they owned it or whatever. So, anyway, that's all I have to say about that story. So let's just move right on. Big news here is Nintendo Direct is coming. It says Wednesday, but it's tomorrow. Uh, well, actually, depending on when the hell this gets uploaded, it might be today, might be tomorrow, depending on if it gets uploaded before midnight. Anyway, um, so Nintendo Direct coming today, or tomorrow, or whenever, Wednesday that is, uh, and it's supposed to be about 3DS software launching, uh, from this point on until, uh, early next year. So basically, I'm pretty sure what we will see, what I can pretty much guarantee we will see, is we're gonna see Zelda Link Between Worlds stuff which is kind of pointless since we've seen a fair amount of it and it's already coming out in just like two three weeks uh, actually not even about two weeks yeah um, Mario Party Island Tour that's also the same day as Zelda we don't really need to see too much more of that but I mean we still haven't seen too much but whatever and what else could we be seeing um, I'm really hoping we get a Monster Hunter 4 localization coming to North America we know it's going to happen at some point, and I've been saying in other videos, you know, probably around January, February, early uh, 2014, we should be getting it. So hopefully they'll show it off here. Um, other than that, maybe they'll show off Mario Golf for the 3DS since that was delayed till early next year. Uh, I don't really think we'll be seeing anything like the Kirby game they showed off since that was only just recently shown. It'd be nice if they did, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, maybe Yoshi Land uh, or Yoshi's New Island, we might see something on that. I'm not sure. Uh, just that type of thing. So let's move on to, I guess, our next story here, which is Digital Foundry. This kind of goes with the video I did before. Call of Duty Ghost Wii U is a disappointment compared to the 360 and PS3. Now he's talking about sales, uh, and I don't have to say much. All I have to say is, like I said in my other video, the 1% sales of Call of Ghost being on Wii U, 4 million Wii U's. Hardly any of them want Call of Duty on the fucking Wii U system in the first place. People would rather pay to play online on other systems, so it's just stupid people, whatever. Nothing to be excited about. Moving right on to our next story is Pokemon X and Y soundtracks available on iTunes. Now, for most people like myself, I, I'm not going to get it. I could just, you know, download it offline or online or whatever, uh, or just play the actual game and listen to the music, so whatever. It's going to be about 10 bucks, so 212 songs, that's quite a damn lot. So if you want, go check it out, download it, whatever. And our last story here is about Zelda Link Between Worlds, where Game Informer, uh, they rate video games, they review them and whatnot. I don't know why this is being slow. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, there we go. Game Informer, Informer gives Link Between Worlds a perfect score of 10 out of 10. So that's pretty nice. Um, right here you can, I'll go over a few things. They say they were impressed with the rental system and how it makes it uh, a death scarier prospect. I don't know what that means. Um, We'll see what that means. Heart piece puzzles are clever, which is good. Uh, you gotta love the puzzles in Zelda games. Uh, he loves how the drawing mechanic causes you to look at the game from a whole different perspective. The game has some of the best dungeons and boss battles Link has ever experienced, which is great news. Uh, some bosses are old, but most of them are new. <clears throat> now, if you're wondering why, is, what do you mean old bosses in this game? Because it's not a remake. It's, uh, well, the old bosses are from the Link uh, to the Past. Um, and then the dungeons can be done in any order. There's no hand-holding, which is what a lot of people wanted, was no freaking hand-holding, no partner uh, like Fee and Skyward Sword who just, you know, go here, go here, go here, go here, go here, go here, do this, do this, do this. Um, so that's good. 
uh, and all items are available from the outset leaving you free to explore at your convenience uh, which is nice and while the world map layout is highly similar to a link between uh, the, or a link to the past there are still a lot of tweaks and it's not a simple copy and paste job so I guess that's gonna do it so that's my five stories to talk about in this video so stay tuned this is original Blaze. as always more videos coming soon up next Amiiverse shenanigans and I'm sure you all know what I'll be talking about in that one stay tuned for that